Welcome back to another video and as you can see I look ridiculous today. I'm attempting to, uh, well I'm trying out head mount rather than chest mount. The chest mount has become super uncomfortable, it gets in the way when I'm fishing and I feel like this might be a better view anyway. Um, the only thing is I can't mount my microphone so the audio is probably absolutely awful for this so you yeah, know getting used to it it's one or the other um so i'm going to try this i'm going to try and head map for this session uh, and see how we get on um what we're we doing we are perching again and we are hoping today just for one big fish that's all we want um and i'm going to show you how i do that a bit later in the video when, I, when the fish is tough as it is at the moment the water's super cold and the fish are really spread out because there's not a lot of run and i'm going to show you how i locate and how i catch big fish Dragon's the name of the game. Ah, oh, it's gonna snag. Come out. Ah, oh, no. Yeah, it's still there. It's still there. I said, get out of the snag. Get out of the snag. Get up. Get up. Bullying this fish a bit. Oh, it's a bloody pike. You bugger. Hooks out. Line's clear. Back you go. Bugger. Okay, so I'm going to show you my go-to rig when it's really tough in the winter uh, and you're just looking for one bite of one good fish. Uh, and that is a very simple Texas rig. Uh, I've got a seven gram bullet weight pegged really, really close to the hook. The reason being, this is really snaggy. I've lost umpteen amounts of gear in the last few weeks. Uh, so pegging it just gives it that doesn't allow the, the, the weight to move away from the hook and give that separation where it can wrap around things. If you, if you by peg it, just using a little float stop, just push it right up against the hook, and there's no nowhere for that to get snagged on. Then down to I think that's a, a 3 0 or it might even be a 4 0 offset wide gap hook, and then the old favourite. 3.3 uh, inch stroker craw from Six Sense, and this is the black blue black blue glitter, I think. Um, and just sort of fish that weedless. And all I'm doing is just tucking the point of the hook into the top of the bait. Just makes it absolutely smooth. Much less chance of it picking up on any debris or rocks or trees or whatever there is lying on the bottom here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start fishing something really negatively, so just dragging it, not even lifting it up off the bottom, just dragging it along the bottom, pulls in. You know, pulls you for a lot longer than you, you would think, 10 to 15 seconds, and then drag it another eight inches. Uber negative, it's real slow going, but I have got all day to do it today, which is unusual for me. Usually I'm fishing around school run and things like that. I've got a full day's fishing today. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna drag this around, see what we find. Yes, yes, be a perch, please be a perch. Get up. Please be a perch. Oh, it is a perch, it's a nice one. Oh, yes. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. So today has been a grind. Um, the wind's made it awfully difficult to cast. I had to really up the weight, sort of seven and 10 grams. But it absolutely paid off. Look at that, get your fin up. Unbelievable perch. Fat as anything, let me show you. The, look at that. So wide. Uh, these fish are either 
absolute gorging, which I don't think they are because they're uh, they're not that easy to catch, or they're just about ready to spawn. And I think that's more likely. Um, we've got about four or five days left of the river season, and these fish will be left alone um, to do their thing in peace, which is the right way to do it. Uh, it seems to have timed itself well uh, up here. Down south, it never seemed to work out, but it seems to work out up here. Um, but yeah, 40, well, 41 centimetres, just over 41, but for the sake of the big lurf comp, it's a round up competition, so it'll count as 42, which will upgrade me by two centimetres, which is lovely. So we're gonna get this one back now and just keep grinding. I've got to fish the whole day. I've got four days of fish, which doesn't happen very often. And I've got to try and winkle out a few more of these. Okay, let's get this fish released. It's very ready to go back. Let's dip the net. Okay, I'll get you in that, mate. There you go. Go on, what are you doing? Well, that wasn't very cinematic or graceful, but it has gone back. Brilliant. Let's get another one. There's the one. Get up. Get up, get up. Get out the snag. Get up, get up. Get up. Another one. Brilliant. Lovely. Okay, we should get this fish straight back. 38 centimetre. There you go. Definitely a bit of a bright window, so no mess around. 10 hours later. Yes, I still have got my silly headwear on. Uh, I can't be asked to take it off yet, but we are done. Uh, that little pike first thing this morning, and then a couple of perch. Actually made quite a decent day. There's quite a few people I'm fishing, quite a few other people fishing, and uh, I didn't see much else caught. Um, so I'll take that. I'll take that as a little bit of a win. Got myself a little upgrade in the Big Lurf Winter Comp, which is nice. And yeah, we've got, what is day is it today? We've got four, five days left of the season, so not long left to capitalise. I'm working all but one of them, so I'm going to have one last day just to try and grab one last whacker before it closes. But there's always next year, and then we're on to... Different things, trout and salmon and sea trout and everything else. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you've learned something about how I approach like, late season rivers for perch. And I'll see you on the next one.